Second Attack on the NES was a side-scrolling action game based on the arcade game of the same name. You take control of a US soldier and infiltrate a secret Soviet base. The mission that they give you is pretty simple. Destroy the enemy's secret weapon. So it looks like the Russians are developing weapons of mass destruction, and your objective is to sneak in and destroy it. Well, so much for the sneaking pot. They spot you right off the bat, the alarm goes off, and they attack with a barrage of foot soldiers. Nice job in deciding the parachute location. No problem though, because a mission like this, you know the US military is going to provide you with adequate weapons in case you run into trouble. Except that all you have is a knife. So you've got to kill hundreds of soldiers and dispose of a huge unknown weapon with the use of a blade. Now most of these enemy soldiers don't fire any weapons. Most of them kill you in Nintendo's traditional touch of death by simply running into you. You've got the foot soldiers that just run, and have another variation of them that do a jumping ninja kick. About 90% of the enemies in the entire game are one of these two, not counting the bosses. In level 2, you'll deal with snipers, and in level 4, you'll find these artillerymen hiding in barrels, and these paratroopers that fire as they parachute down. There's also these soldiers in yellow that have either a pistol or a machine gun. They can also climb ladders and chase you, while the others seem to be blind or stupid. You can get these other guys in yellow, but they wear the same uniform as you. All they do is slowly jog in your direction. When you kill them, they leave a power up. Almost every time it's a weapon of some sort. Why these guys aren't using the weapons themselves is beyond me. The power ups consist of a bazooka, which will let you fire three shots, grenades, which will also let you fire three shots, a pistol, which will give you a limited amount of time for blasting as many bullets as you want, and the star, which gives you temporary invincibility. The ammo for these weapons are listed as POWs, which last time I checked stood for prisoners of war on the battlefield. Because all you're really doing is slashing people, and there's a lack of variety of enemies, the gameplay gets kinda stale before it should. It's a pretty good paced game, but after a while you kinda wanna see something different. The controls in this game are responsive, but a little odd. Button B stabs with the knife, and up jumps instead of the traditional A button. Instead, A fires off the POW weapon whenever you have it. The only other gripe I have with the control is the jumping. For one thing, you can't control how far you want to jump. If you're jumping in either direction, you're going to travel the same distance every time. You can't change your decision while in midair. Since you have to hold up and right to jump right, or up and left to jump left, sometimes you'll just jump straight up into the air when you intend to jump forward or backward if you don't happen to hit both buttons at the same time. This would have been a lot easier if A jumped and select fired off the weapon you'd get every once in a while. Although the enemies are pretty easy to beat by themselves, a lot of times you'll have several guys coming from both sides, and you have to react quick. One hit kills you, and you have to start at the beginning of the level every time. There are checkpoints, but they operate in a bizarre fashion. Let's say you die after hitting the first checkpoint. You'll start back at the checkpoint, kill a few enemies, and let's say you die again. So you should be back at the checkpoint again. But no, they back you up before the checkpoint. What the hell is that all about? I've never heard of a checkpoint that can only be used once like that. And you start the game with five lives. You can get more by getting enough points, but it takes a while. So basically, you can only fuck up five times and the game is over. On top of that, there's no continues. So you have to play this game a lot and know it's coming. There's also a two-player simultaneous mode. And the great thing about this is, besides getting some extra help, if you die, you'll respawn. Which really beats having to work with checkpoints that don't always work. Even if one player gets a game over and you're now by yourself, you'll still respawn. So a cheap trick to make the game easier for one player mode is to pick two players, let player two die five times, then stop playing the game and you just keep picking up from where you left off after you die. It's kind of sort of cheating, but fuck it, the game's hard enough as it is. The backgrounds look pretty good. There's usually a lot of detail and fits the setting appropriately. The price and animation, however, are pretty average. The music is awesome. The tunes are catchy and have a lot of substance and changes. The only problem is there are only three songs and two of them alternate levels. Stages 1, 3, and 5 have the first song, while stages 2 and 4 have the second song, and the final level, stage 6, has the third song. So let's go through each of these levels, shall we? Level 1 is a missile base. You'll get attacked by several foot soldiers first. A simple swipe of the knife as they approach you will do them in. You kill the yellow guy here and get a bazooka. Be sure to save at least one shot for these landmines up here. It's much easier to lay flat out and blast them out of your way than it is to jump over them and stab enemies at the same time. Boy, they didn't do a very good job of concealing these mines. And whoever heard of the concept of disposing landmines with a bazooka? 
It's a pretty foreign concept to me. It sounds a little dangerous. Anyway, a little while later, you'll run into these guys in red and black. They're the ones that do the jump kick. You can take these guys out by simply standing in one spot and slashing. But sometimes if you move toward them just a little, you'll be out of position and die. Another method is to jump and attack, but this could be a problem if there's someone charging you from behind because you won't be able to turn around in time to take them out. You could also just run right underneath their attacks and let them jump over you. The only problem is that if there's another jump kick guy behind him or someone chasing you from behind, you'll try to stop to fend them off, which could lead to a death. Later on, you'll find another yellow guy that provides a bazooka, and if you already have one, the ammo doesn't roll over, so you'll always have three shots maximum. Save your bazooka for the boss of this level, even though it's pretty easy anyway. Instead of coming up with a unique boss with different attacks, you get a barrage of the same guys you've seen all throughout the level. Three lines of jumping soldiers and a foot soldier. Wait for all of them to get on the screen and let them have it with the bazooka. They have no defense to it. Just in case you run out of ammo, all you have to do is stand still and slice them up as they charge. Just keep swinging that knife and they'll drop like flies. Between every level you get this little cutscene which shows your character climbing the fence to get to the next target. Now, I know this guy is badass and everything because he's killing hundreds of people, many of them armed, with just a knife. So yeah, he's got some balls, but he's a fucking retard. Look, why the hell doesn't he just walk around the fence? It's wide open. Does he really need to climb and leap over the barbed wire? So anyway, level 2 is at an airport. If you'll notice, the enemies are in different uniforms now. The foot soldiers are in a brownish maroon color, while the jumping soldiers are in more of a bright orange. They'll change like this in every level, and it doesn't take long to adjust. Not long into the level, you'll discover a new enemy. This sniper hiding up in the tower. His bullets are slow, but will always travel in your direction, so you've got to keep your eye on him while fighting enemies on the ground. The good news is that if you stand directly under him, he won't fire. I guess he can't see you unless you're pretty far away. Be sure that everything in front of you is cleared out before you move forward. And that yellow guy I just killed is the guy that can climb ladders and shoot. So whenever you see him on the screen, the best place to be is lying flat on the ground. He can't shoot you then. He's a pain in the ass sometimes though, because he won't always be running in your direction. See how he retreats and shoots like that? Just be patient and he'll eventually get close enough. The next power up you find is some grenades, which aren't really as effective. They'll kill anything in the vicinity of where it lands, rather than a clean sweep of everything in front of you. But it comes in handy. Here's the toughest part of the level, a line of five snipers. You don't want to be too conservative here, because if you stop underneath them, you not only bait more soldiers to come after you, but you've got to worry about the snipers on either side of you. The first thing you want to do is kill the pistol soldier as soon as possible. If you get caught up in fighting the snipers and this guy at the same time, you'll probably die. After that, start running and don't stop. Focus on the soldiers on the ground while keeping an eye on the sniper's fire coming down. Only turn around to kill the ones from behind once they catch up to you. Don't turn around and wait for them. Immediately after the snipers comes the boss. Three rocketeers that chuck grenades. There's also a foot soldier that runs around to distract you. Just avoid the grenades and jump and attack them when they swoop down. They can't hurt you when down there. One hit kills each. So before we move on to level 3, I'd like to just point out how stupid this guy's uniform is. The United States Army's camouflage patterns are supposed to blend in with their environment as best they can. Dark green in the jungle, tan in the desert, etc. This bright blue design makes this guy stand out like a sore thumb. No wonder why he was spotted so soon. Now, I know that the graphic designers has wanted you to be able to see the guy that you're controlling, but don't you think green would have been a more appropriate choice? It wouldn't have bled with the backgrounds any more so than this blue does. So level 3 takes place on a hub. Climb up to the top level right away because this power up guy provides you with the invincibility star. Get it and just run as fast as you can with it. It's the only time in the whole game you'll ever get this power up so enjoy it. Also right after you do get the invincibility, go back to the lower level and kill this power up guy and you'll get the pistol. This thing is awesome and a lot of fun to use. Unfortunately, you can only use it for a short time, but it'll help you clean up some of the garbage along the way.